In the world of Tesla AI and specifically full self-driving, James Dalma is quite the authority. And he posted a really interesting thread on Twitter just a few minutes ago, so I thought I would cover it. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All, so I wanted to take a look at this tweet thread, and it was started by Warren Redlick, who I'm sure most of you know. Anyway, <laughs> as he says, YouTuber and Tesla hyperbole, and generally very intelligent person also. But he said, would Tesla have to completely retrain full self-driving when they upgrade to hardware 4? And he copied James Dalma on that. And as you can see here, just a little over an hour ago, my time as I'm recording this, James replied, you could port the old networks to the new hardware with a shim layer if you just wanted to get something running on the new hardware. But it wouldn't give you better performance since it's still the same neural network and it's not taking advantage of the new hardware capabilities. So basically what he's talking about here is something that's kind of running in simulation almost. It's hardware 4 but it's running a simulation of hardware 3 and for people who've been in the computer world not even in the industry but just using it in the past you know that generally speaking when you get a much much faster hardware chip you can run older software in simulation that pretends to be an older chip. So you know you could take a newer Intel chip and you could run in simulation stuff from an older Intel chip. Or what Apple has done in the past is they've created this thing called Boot Camp that runs Windows in simulation on their Macintosh computers. So that kind of thing is relatively common. I don't personally know about doing this with neural networks, but of course I assume that James does. But it's a really interesting idea that you would actually have to run these neural networks in simulation because ultimately all these neural networks are at heart is a bunch of code. At a high level, these things all look like neurons and all of this kind of stuff, but at very low levels at the kind of metal or silicon level at which Tesla is operating at the very, very base. These things are really, really fine tuned to the specifics of hardware three. So under the hood, you know, while you're doing your programming and all of that stuff, that all looks like it could be abstracted and it doesn't matter what the hardware underneath it is. But given the fact that they're optimizing this and optimizing this and optimizing this, the odds are that they've got it worked out to be very, very specific to hardware three chips. And hardware four, even if it's an evolution of hardware three, is still going to be significantly different. So you're going to have to create some sort of simulation layer in between where hardware 4 is pretending to be hardware 3 to get this hardware 3 code running first. So assuming that James is correct, and again, remember, we're all on the outside. So I think he's probably very much correct, but none of us have the inside track on how all this works. But assuming this works, what that means is you won't see very much difference in performance at the beginning between hardware 3 and hardware 4. And here's something that James doesn't bring up in his tweet thread, but is interesting, which is that Tesla could already be putting hardware 4 chips into some people's cars. I'm not saying they are. I have no indication that they are, but it would be just like Tesla to put hardware 4 chips into the vehicles already and be driving these things around. Nobody knows that it's hardware 4. And what the full self-driving software is seeing looks like hardware 3, so nobody actually realizes what's going on. This would be a great way to sort of test things out and see how well hardware 4 was working and make sure that the code was really, really solid before they do the next steps, which is the subject of the rest of James's tweet thread. So here we have a six part tweet thread and you can see he's replying to himself here. But basically he says, if I was going to guess at how Tesla will roll out hardware four, I'd use the hardware three rollout as a model. And they did have to do this upgrading hardware two and hardware 2.5 to hardware three. First port the old software to the new hardware and get that working on the subset of the fleet that is now shipping with the new hardware. In other words, just what I was saying, like what if this was already happening? What if there was hardware for already out there? Again, I'm not suggesting that's the case, but you never know with Tesla, it could be out there. And then the next step is to massage the ported version to create a hardware for native version that eliminates overhead from the initial port and starts to take advantage of new hardware for compute power. Keep rolling this out to the hardware for fleet so you can gather hardware for sensor native data for a new training corpus. So basically the idea here is that you're getting rid of that simulation layer. So you're rewriting the code so it's native to hardware 4. It doesn't have to be super, super optimized at this point because remember hardware 4 is a much, much faster chip than hardware 3. Hardware 3 is about 72 teraflops per chip or about 144 total. I'm not exactly sure what the hardware 4 specs are. I'm not actually sure if they've ever said, but I know that they've had it taped out in an early production for 
quite a while now, since I think early 2021 or something. So it is quite possible that this chip is already relatively mature and even potentially in relatively high production rates. And one other thing to add to this, which James kind of assumes everybody knows, which is that there are new cameras from Samsung that are much, much higher resolution than the current ones. I think if I'm remembering, and this is just off the top of my head, so feel free to correct me in the comments if I don't get this quite right, but I'm doing this off the top of my head and I think I'm reasonably close. Anyway, the current cameras, the eight cameras are currently 1.2 megapixels as far as I remember. And the new Samsung cameras are going to be five megapixels. And I believe as of July, they're already in full production, commercial production levels. And Tesla is purchasing these new cameras from Samsung. They have a much higher bandwidth. Obviously, if you have a 1.2 megapixel camera, there's only so much data that needs to go across the buses and the wiring and everything to get to the chips. Whereas the five megapixel camera is going to require a lot more bandwidth. And that comes up later in this tweet thread. So anyway, you get the higher resolution cameras, you get the hardware for native thing, and then you start looking at sensor data and you start looking at the differences between the camera hardware, the chip hardware, and also the software. So that's what he's talking about in number two out of six on this tweet thread. Next, part three, you split off the network architectures and training corpus for the hardware four version. In other words, you fork the code at this point. So you make a completely native hardware four version of your neural networks and a completely native hardware three version remains as it is. And you start pushing the functionally different hardware four and hardware three versions to their respective fleets. So initially there's gonna be a relatively few hardware four enabled cars and there'll be a ton of hardware three enabled cars, but over time these things will grow to be even and then hardware four eventually will be many more than hardware three. Initially the differences are small and much of it is focused on polishing the hardware four version. Then as the hardware four version stabilizes and starts to have meaningfully better performance than hardware three, you start upgrading FSD owners who are still on hardware three to the hardware four hardware suite. In the hardware two to three case, which is what I talked about earlier, the early parts took most of a year, but for three to four, that should go faster because four, the hardware architecture changes are much more incremental. And two to three, they had to migrate from catalog hardware, which was basically just off the shelf parts, to custom ASICs and a neural network accelerator. On three to four, the top level architecture changes less and the new ASIC can be designed to be backward compatible to some degree. And this is a very important statement. It's really important to understand that the hardware two to hardware three transition was completely new chips. Everything was brand new. The ASIC was designed by Tesla, their first real foray into this. They had neural network accelerators. All of that stuff is the same or should be the same on hardware four versus hardware three. So this is just a little incremental change between hardware three and four. You're just getting more compute power, more memory, etc. But the architectural changes, the way you're programming things, all of that should be relatively the same. So this should go pretty smoothly, honestly. And James finishes this up by saying, in addition, they have more resources and better infrastructure now. Obviously, it's a much bigger company. They have a much better logistics plan and all of that kind of stuff, which is very, very true. And they just have more money in general to be able to do this. And also, rather importantly, they have the experience of doing this before to guide them and more time to prepare. Still, I expect the complete transition will be several months at a minimum. And just to throw this in, I think this is rather important. And again, these numbers are just rough numbers. I said, thanks, James. This is a fantastically detailed and thoughtful post, which it really, really is. It has a lot of information that I really hadn't thought about very clearly before. The only thing I would add that could slow things down is how many more cars Tesla has on the road now. Pushing out somewhere around 50,000 hardware three upgrades is a whole lot different logistically than 2 million hardware four upgrades, more or less. So again, don't hold me to these exact numbers, but you can see what I'm talking about. We're, we're a couple of orders of magnitude. More hardware has to be pushed out to approximately two plus million Teslas than did in the original case, which was somewhere between 50,000 and 100,000 vehicles. So Tesla is much bigger. They have a lot more money. They can do this more efficiently, but there's a whole lot more cars that they have to do this for. So anyway, it is going to take a long time. And obviously the new cars are going to get the hardware for first. That's where the chips are going to go. So the people who have hardware three currently, which is pretty much all of us, unless someone's getting sneaky hardware four in there, are going to have to patiently wait for excess chips to be produced so that beyond the ones that they're making for the vehicles that are being produced now, they have extras that they can retrofit into the cars and of course to have service time so that we can bring them into their showrooms and have them do the upgrade and all that stuff. So it will take time. I would be fairly gobsmacked if this happened in less than six months, but I would also be rather surprised if it took them more than a year. And the reason why is that Tesla wants to get this done as efficiently as possible, because as soon as they start doing hardware four and really focusing on it, hardware three becomes an albatross. They have to design the software and keep upgrading it and keep making changes to it and all of that kind of stuff on a forked code base. And that's a pain in the butt. Plus the fact this is older, so it's not as efficient. It doesn't do as much 
stuff. So they're obviously going to want to try to move people to hardware for as fast as possible. And as I mentioned in a previous video, Tesla, I think, will say that hardware three is adequate to do full self-driving and they'll try to get NHTSA and other regulatory bodies to approve it for private parties like me, right? I own my car and I can do this thing where I don't have to touch the steering wheel and the car can drive itself. I do not think that they will even think about allowing robo taxis, which would in this case be me loaning my car out and letting other people drive it around so that I might drive to work, I leave it in the parking lot, I enable robo taxi mode and the thing goes around and picks up people and makes money while I'm at work. I don't think there's a snowball's chance in hell that that is going to happen with hardware three. That will definitely be a hardware four thing. So what I think is that Tesla will either do this for free, I'm not positive they will, or they will do it at cost or even below cost to try to get as many people onto hardware four as possible possible. And there will probably be some sort of end of life thing eventually where they'll just be like, look, if you're still on hardware three, this is the code base you're going to be at and you're not going to get any more upgrades, which will hopefully be the sort of carrot and stick, right? If they're like, you can do this for 500 bucks or something like that. And if you get it, you get all these cool new things. But if you don't get it, eventually you're not going to get any upgrades anymore. That sort of carrot and stick thing will probably drive you know, 80, 90, 95% of people to eventually do it within a year or two. And just as a really quick addendum to this, you can see Ed saying, I'm worried that hardware three wiring will not have enough bandwidth for hardware four. Thus, Tesla will not rewire old Teslas and they'll be stuck with hardware three forever. James responded to this by saying, if you're worried about bandwidth, the cameras over the existing harness in the cases where the camera goes from 1.2 to 5.4 megapixels, don't. Hey, and I was just about right. I said 1.2 to five. Anyway, he said the transmission line bandwidth should be fine for that kind of upgrade. I'd be shocked if Tesla didn't make hardware for work on the old wiring. And if you don't know what he's literally talking about here is the wires, the actual wires that go between the cameras and the hardware board, the motherboard that does the calculations. So those things only have a limited amount of bandwidth, right? There's only a certain amount of data that they can pass through them, but this wiring should have enough buffer to be able to handle the higher bandwidth needs. So anyway, this is a really, really fascinating tweet thread. I would be interested to know what other people think about this. This is a lot of stuff that James Dalman has obviously been like, you know, cranking through in his head and thinking about because it's a very detailed rollout plan. And I think, again, we're on the outside looking in, so we don't have any internal details from what Tesla is doing. But this seems like a pretty reasonable rollout plan and a pretty reasonable pace that he's talking about, six months to a year, that sort of timeline to make the transition from hardware three to hardware four. So a big thanks to Warren Redlick for starting this and especially to James Dalma for finishing it up and really talking this through. I think this is fantastic. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and thought provoking and interesting. If you did, please do like it so other people on YouTube can find it and of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my Patreon patrons. Thank you so much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. I had a lot of fun meeting a couple of you in San Diego at the Fully Charged event. It was a really, really wonderful event. And actually on Best in Tesla, you can check out our talk that we did on Sunday. So definitely go look that up if you're interested. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla Bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200 and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.